everybody and once again you join me on another adventure and this will be the last adventure for my car before it gets some paintwork sorted and I'm being followed by oh dearie me I'm being followed by another uh, Mark III and uh, I know exactly where he's going it's quite possible I might be the only unmodified example there I might be wrong about that one but we'll soon see uh, but as you can hear the pops and bangs behind me um, so this might be quite interesting Evans House Shaw is celebrating 25 years of the Focus there's one in Wolverhampton near me there's one in Walsall so there's a couple of options and I'm going to the one in Walsall because it's the most local uh, and this should be quite interesting we should see an array of vehicles and uh, I believe every single Evans House Shaw dealership um, is actually doing this as a celebration this Sunday so this is happening in uh, Old Trafford and a few other places that I know so uh, should be quite interesting so uh, let's see what we've got in store it's a big dealership this it's a big dealership oh, they've got one actually on stands that's quite handy oh yes I'd like to see a Mark IV underneath those stands get my camera down there. Let me, that could be quite interesting um, and as you can see we have quite a variety of cars here now this is to celebrate 25 years of the Focus and we've got quite a number of actually interesting examples here and Evans Halshaw in there have put on a really small display, a really nice display. There's one particular car that you are all going to love. I think there's a few in there you're going to love that they've put on for special. But anyway, uh, let's go around and see what there is. Right, we start off with this ship box. So we won't look at that because we've looked at that so many times before. And we're going to go straight to the Mark IV, which is sitting over here on these ramps. Um, I do need a set of these, but I don't have the space. Imagine this working on your car. I think uh, I lost count of how much this might cost, um, but it's certainly uh, mm, nice. I do like the, these wheels on the, these Mark IVs. I think they look so tidy it's untrue really really nice this sort of spider action they're not quite the same as the spider wheels that i like and they're, they're very different but uh yeah you've got the caps over the nuts which uh, are quite nice when they start swelling up uh interesting locking wheel nut cap but these calipers with uh the uh, same um return spring that's very familiar to mark one people um yep Don't get me wrong, I, I'm not a massive fan of Mark IVs, but I do like this. I do like that. And I think these will sell quite well considering the, the focus is uh, coming out of production um, very soon. And I, I think I think with no focus and oh, it's the ST line, so it's not quite the ST, it's the one below that. Um, it's the sort of ST but not ST one. I, that's what I call it. Um, it is a one litre EcoBoost, 125 brake horsepower, very good. We got a lot of optional extras fitted to this as well, so uh, quite interesting. I love, I do love this colour though. I think Ford, I still do amazing colours. Oh no, 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 no. Fabric wheel arch liners, no, no. To be fair, these are very well galvanised and interesting on a lot of these cars now. A lot of modern cars do not have arch lips. Uh, you know, back in the day, where, even on Mark 1s, you've got an arch lip. These don't have any lip. It's just a, a, a complete turnaround, which is quite interesting. Um, but we've got the same stupid springs. I, I hate these. You, it takes ages for you to, to get them off. Um, but ideally, these are galvanised, so you can have liners on them. It's just, you know, Mark 1 thing. Now, I'm going to take you under here. Now instantaneously i can tell you because this is not top of the range we have a torsion beam rear setup now a lot of people say that this is actually 
very similar in feel to a control blade rear suspension. Ford did a lot of research into actually getting this, what is a torsion beam, actually really reliable. So the spring actually sits in a cup here and it basically just pushes off um, the actual cross, uh, cross member which goes all the way forwards, the uh, chassis rail. Uh, but apart from that, we've got this undershield around here um, and this big massive uh, exhaust box that sits around here. Uh, but uh, rather nice and there's a lot of um, heat shrinking around um, the fuel tank area I suspect. Um, that is probably for the benefit. But uh, we've got a shock absorber mounted to the back of the hub. It's quite simple, really. It's not as good as the independent setup that you get on the top spec models. And I think the ST does get that, or will get that. But the ST line gets a torsion beam like most of the models. But most people will probably not notice the difference between this and an earlier Focus. Um, but car enthusiasts, I think I would notice the difference. I think the control blade independent setup, I don't know why they ditched it for a different version that was fitted to the higher specs of this car. Anyway, that's really nice to see. I mean, we can look underneath the front on this side, but um, th there's not really much to see apart from, oh my God, why would you put carpet felt on the bottom? That's gonna get really dirty. I suppose that's to stop noise and vibration. Um, but everything is covered up, literally. You can't see much at all. And uh, we've got a similar setup at the front here that, you know, a lower control arm just there. And it's very familiar to anybody with any Ford Focus of any age. Oh, now this, I will tell you, was behind me when I came in. Oh, oh. okay. Yep, yep. There is a lot of money going on here, and I don't know what these are called, but they are really cool. Uh, the high end, you've got high end brakes, you've got um, drill discs, which uh, will vent the uh, the braking very nicely. Ah, EBC brakes is potentially what we're looking at here, hence the sticker. I do you like the registration plates on these? Yellow to match the colour going on. I quite like that. Ah. Interesting, that's nice website. Love this boiler indeed. It really does catch my eye, this. And strange enough, it is it's pure Ford, this is. This Mark III is uh, quite interesting. And I'm gonna come here and show you this Mark III. Now, this is a diesel model, the TDCI, and it has not been messed about with. It's been kept pretty original. We've got some um, struts to help open the bonnet, which I've seen on a number of cars, and I think it's a really nice touch. Um, it's not a Ford thing, because Ford generally, you just have a rod. It's more of a, a luxury car thing to have struts, but it actually goes really well, and these kits are quite easy to obtain. And um, these covers are, have been done at home believe it or not and they've been painted extremely well it all links in really nicely Black one. absolutely gorgeous these wheels with the matching wheel nuts and the actual air cap Wah. okay really nice and obviously the smoked back lights that's quite a common theme with mark threes and it kind of goes well and you've got this rear diffuser which Again, it just goes in really nicely. And the mud flaps as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we have a, a Mark 7 Fez with something interesting going on down below. And um, yeah, it's been, um, we've got some interesting negative camber going on here, I suspect. Well, it actually doesn't look that negative from here, but uh, lovely spoiler indeed and carbon fibre. Love it. Absolutely love this car. Hmm. Red colour co coordinated trims going on in there to match the paint. It's been done before, very nice. And over here, we have got this Stormtrooper theme, black and white theme going on. So we've got lots of carbon fibre inserts over the coolant bottle and over the scuttle, carbon fibre battery cover, carbon fibre engine cover, and uh, we've got a, a REM air cone air filter, which with this shroud should be ideal to keep away the hot engine bay gases. We've got obviously blacked out headlights, carbon fibre, carbon fibre. 
you get the theme going on here guys carbon fiber door cappings quarter panel carbon fiber door handles and that's an instagram carbon fiber vents with this sort of matted if you can see this it's sort of like a a black it's the blacked out light but it's got like vented slats in it that's quite cool actually i've not seen one like that and obviously a carbon fiber diffuser with twin exhaust which are they look to me like they're about 20 inches big <laughs> wow and a carbon fiber spoiler and oh no it's a standard area it's not carbon fiber oh gosh and over here we have some non ford thing we don't like we don't talk about renaults uh a mark one rs and this is a delight to see at any show wearing the original alloys which we all like to see and it is imperial blue and this is one smashing color on a mark one rs and uh yep we've got standard sort of lights we've got some standard parts and possibly something a bit bigger I do like the holes drilled into that. Maybe that's supposed to give a different sound. Love the registration plate. This this paintwork beams and the arches are really nice. And obviously on the RS you get plastic wheel arches. Why did they not do that on all the other models? There'd be a huge market for that. Everybody'd be throwing away their carpets and buying these. Ugh. You can modify them, but you have to cut them up and it's a bit of a faff, which is why I've not done it with my own. But uh Yep, part of the Mark 1 RS Owners Club. Very nice to see, most of them are. And I will tell you now, that is really annoying. And it is when the there's a little rubber strip that actually rusts inside the actual door, uh, the actual door rubber itself. So when it rusts, it bubbles the, the rubber on the outside. That's really annoying. And I'm pretty sure the owner will want to remove that because it is, it's the only thing that I've noticed on this that really doesn't go with anything else. That's just absolutely stunning. And we have under this lovely engine cover, it's the ST version obviously, we've got uh, a Ram Air filter at the front I suspect, or it just, it just says Ram Air. Oh, possibly not. Um, but uh, we've got this lovely intake, that's a lot of boost there. That's, uh, that's going to give you a heck of a lot of boost. Now I believe that this would be the petrol EcoBoost engine. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but it does look like it. Um, We've got these lovely bucket seats and a, a roll cage in here and uh, ooh, okay mono steering wheel very small very dainty um longer gear lever probably a short shifter that's cracking and we come across here they're nice they just look good anywhere and uh mm, some amplifiers going on here sound and some extra bracing that is always interesting Considering that this is a torsion bar underneath, but that essentially acts as a secondary torsion bar. Um, back here we've got this 65 Match 1, <laughs> as denoted on the side there, uh, Mustang, which will no doubt come with the V8. I'm pretty certain about that. Um, oh, good grief. See, I'm trying to take an interest um, in these even though I failed to do so. I do like the steering wheel on these. I think they look really cool, almost Jaguar-like. Um, there's definitely a similarity between Jaguar steering wheels of the last 10 years and these, um, but I think everything has been extremely well designed. It does look somewhat American, but sold to a British audience. And I think that's what they were trying to gain because American cars have always been a fascination to um, the UK owners for quite a long time and there is a reason for that and I think it's what Ford wanted to tap into the market by selling the Mustang in this country so we would no longer have to drive left-hand drive versions of a car that we could not buy in the UK. I love them total switches over there I think that's such a cool touch something I've really seen and those vents are very uh, Mercedes like with the the, um, the sort of chrome silver surround very nice indeed and so these seats are so supportive these Recaros Ooh, and then we have another ST and a Mark IV this time very very nice indeed in this beautiful colour um, again another Insta Ooh, interesting if I come around here 
Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I do like that. And uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is not something you see in the back of every car. Oh, uh, okay. Keep away, keep away. Might give me uh, signs that I, I need to get something uh, more uh, toy based in my life. That's a wicked display. It might give me an idea in the future. How big do your exhaust have to be? That must sound absolutely amazing. Lovely wheels again. Oh, I just love the decals on this. Perspex, oh yes, lovely. Let's just look through the porthole. And, uh, oh yeah, well that's a good anti-theft measure. Just take the steering wheel away. That's a good top tip that is, if you're afraid of your prized possession being stolen. And um, I can understand that uh, you would want to with this. Oh, goodness me. Um, I, that is an instant blind scenario to anybody else. That's proper rally spec. Yep, don't talk about voxels. Oh, okay, another Mark IV here, which has been kind of slammed. Sam, are you the owner of this car? Yep, completely and utterly slammed on the floor. In fact, it is on the floor. Um, that's rather handy. I would not want a risk of a blowout on that rim. That is severe. Ooh. I don't pretend to understand as such, but um, it looks so low. I'd think it was on an air ride or something. Oh, very nice. And we've got, an, we got uh, another Mark II next to us. Oh, yes. Oh, what's my... Oh, the, the windscreen is this... Okay, if you could see that on the camera, we've got one of these, uh, I can't remember what sort of tinted windscreen this is, but could somebody let me know in the comments because it's creating this, this a, a vivid green bluish aura in the interior. I don't know if the camera is actually picking up that color from the windscreen as the sun goes through it. Oh, very comfortable seat. Any nice wheels as well. Debadged and uncluttered at the front there. We have a Ford Puma right next to it. I'm not a huge fan of these, but still, people are buying them in their drones, and this isn't the, an EV version of any sense. It is a nice colour. Oh, wow. Okay. I do like the, the detail on those vents. They've got the family appearance right because the Focus has the similar sort of grill. I like it. And moving across, we've got this Mark II ST with these rather nice stripy decals on the side and an interior to die for with those fantastic red leather seats. That's a really nice combination on the inside. But um, it is an early Mark II ST, not being a pre, it's been a pre facelift. It's actually much harder to find these these days so um fantastic and obviously we've got the five cylinder volvo engine what a, a fantastic power plant that is and i think F ford and volvo when they started doing small collaborations before uh, basically volvo got taken over by ford this was really ideal and uh perfect collaboration really it's very tidy in here it's very tidy and it's very dry. That's the, the thing you want to see on a lot of these. And uh, interesting wheels. They've started putting the indicators in the um, door mirrors in, on these models, but only, I suspect, on the ST models, up to this stage anyway. And we have a fantastic, again, the colors are just amazing on Mark IVs. As I say, I'm not really into them because I just don't rate them as such compared to the previous Fords and the build quality is a bit suspect uh, on these a little bit. But overall, really nice car. I have to look at cars objectively and this is the estate version and the estate version looks just as good as any other. As I say, I have to be objective about this. It's, for me, the build quality has let some of the models down. Um, but that's not every model. Some models are probably built, built better than others. And then again, over here, we have another RS. Ooh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. 
Do forgive if my camera is a bit off today because the sun is so bright. What a lovely day to come out and see some fabulous motors. Yeah, I like that. Now, here is quite a rare car. It's a ZTEC S and it's basically a Y-Reg. So we've got a Y-Reg ZTEC S. And when was the last time you saw one of these with its purpley red checked seats inside? It's a very much a standard interior, red on the steering wheel as well to match. The wheels have been changed, but this is two owners from new. And the current owner has had this car since about 12 months. That's <laughs> just 12 months into the car's life, I should say. Um, it is a cracking car. It's only done around just over 30,000 miles in its entire life. And it's just incredibly tidy. And I'm, I'm not surprised. The owner gave, gave up d daily driving this car about eight years ago. And I'm not surprised. And the bodywork shows there's no rot. There's no tearing around the filler cap on that side. It's a really cool car. And um, to see uh, a Mark V, as it is known in the UK, or Mark IV abroad, um, it's absolutely superb. It has the 1.6 uh, ZTEC uh, engine, which is the top, the top one you could get on a ZTEC S. Beautiful car. And right next to it, we have this um, XR3i. Um, Wow, okay, registered in Wombourne Ford, and that is the real, real original dealer registration plate from what I can see. But it's it's completely original, this this uh, XR3i with the CVH and uh, the 1.6 version, which was quite powerful back in the day, probably a 105 brake horsepower around about ish. So um, that was uh, pretty decent for back in the day. A little bit coarse at the top end, but nevertheless, really good engines and um, the later ones are even better. I think that after 1986, they were kind of designed more for emissions. So there was a lot of differences. The pre-1986 CVHs were a little bit of a different design. You can't mix and match the two uh, from what I've been told. And uh, standard five-speed gearbox. Yeah, the, la the lattice alloys are just, mm, yeah. It's just an 80s thing, isn't it? Lattice alloys on any Ford, Austin, MG, about well, not Austin, MG, Ford. Yeah, nice. The interior is, is completely original as well, uh, with this lovely dashboard and clunky buttons and a rather beautiful basis of originality. And it hasn't been messed with. Most of them are in pretty good condition these days from what you see. And... Uh, yeah, that's cool. Love this lovely spoiler, spoiler at the back. And we have an RS right next to it, completely standard and original. And uh, if just pop the camera in. Oh yes, we've got the Ford Sync system, which took a long time to get right, uh, from what I've been told. And this is where, as I say, the 3.5, Mark 3.5, they kind of uncluttered the dashboard, Mark 3s, buttons everywhere, looks dreadful. Then they started going more infotainment, reduce the buttons, and it kind of works in the Mark 3.5. They got a lot of things right. And I tell you what, the square bottom on the steering wheel, which is now really common. Can you remember a car from the 70s with a square steering wheel that everybody hated so much they had to get rid of the square steering wheel and put a circle steering wheel? Oh yes, you've got the picture. And uh, that car gets rubbished. And uh, now everybody's doing it. Interesting how technology comes full circle. Mm, I do like a blacked out window on a, a Focus this age. It, it just looks right. And we have the speciality on an E-Reg, a Ford Sierra RS Cosworth in all its glory. And they've put it deliberately here uh, to view because it's just, it takes your breath away, doesn't it? It really does take your breath away. Probably the most, well, the most unusable, uninsurable cars of all time which is why people love them. And this has been to a few places. I love the fact the Ford badge is actually, it's not brand new, it looks patinaed. I love that. And it was actually registered at 
Brooklyn Garages, a very well known name and completely and utterly original at the back with this the whale tail as they might call it it was called a different name but the whale tails of the the earlier cars were kind of more in keeping but that again it's, it's another whale tail spoiler and OZs yeah definitely definitely and we've got well all these electronic gauges up here and all showing lots of digital readings that's ah, just so so 80s <laughs> Now, we've seen most of the visiting cars. I have to admit, that is more than what I thought originally. So, my one is the only Mark 1 here. We've got a Mark 1 RS down here that we've seen. So, those are the only kind of two Mark 1s here. Um, but now, I'm just going to take you around the actual dealership because this is a huge dealership. I've, I've known it to be here for quite a few years. Let's just take a look at some of the offerings before we walk in and see some of their display items because you're going to love what's inside. So I'm going to start round the corner and then work our way around. And um, I'm just going to walk around the car park. As I say, this is Evans House. Sure, we've got the MOT uh, service centre over there. We've got the sales over here with this Art Deco-like uh, typical dealership structure. And uh, it's not quite Art Deco because they are flat windows and they just go slatted to side. The proper Art Deco is where the glass is curved. And uh, I think there's only a few dealerships in the country that I know where that is still a thing. But we've got a load of Fords over here that they've just parked up. I mean, this is the Cougar. I'm not a massive fan of the Cougar, to be honest with you. And a lot of people have said um, in the last, <laughs> in the more recent examples, these are, the, the build quality on them is not good. And there have been numerous problems with these but <laughs> i do like these wheels i, I think the black and the gray really go well together i, I love th there's a similar style on the focus called the spot oh known as a sort of spider alloys they're, they're red wicked um i think you could only get them on a top of the range uh focus mark IV. but these are different but the uh, it's the st line exposition five door 1.5 liter eco boost 150 brake horsepower that is running uh an eco boost to its absolute limits full led headlamps and oh you've got some a gate black is an optional extra um i love the fact that antenna eyes are just a little tiny shark fin I, I call it a shark fin and i think that's how it's um how it's commonly known uh, we have an EcoBoost hybrid. Now, obviously, a lot of the Fiestas, the light Fiestas, are they were offered as a hybrid package. I don't necessarily know too much about them. It is an automatic, uh, this one. Yep, it is the automatic. Uh, most of them are automatics these days. It feels like there's an awful lot of products that are automatics. This is um, a manual, which is quite rare, actually. Uh, ah, I'm standing right next to a Mark IV Focus with the Spider Alloys. I call them the spiders because that's what it looks like. It looks like a spider's web. See, very different there. Yeah, I do. It's, just, it's a spider's web. Definitely. And this is the ST line again with a manual gear up. So we'll have torsion bar, rear suspension. That's quite crude to say that because Ford did a lot of work to get that beam to actually operate to a point where people wouldn't notice the difference between that and the old fashioned control blade rear suspension. Um, personally, I don't know why they got rid of it. It's just another stupid decision by Ford. And uh, yeah, they're taking a lot of final orders for the Fiesta. So getting there quick is my opinion. Although arguably it's, um, oh, one litre EcoBoost. Uh, oh, this is the MHEV. So we get, we've got the, the hybrid system going on here as usual. Yep, it is the EcoBoost hybrid. This is yet to be registered. Mm. Quaint little parking sensors. That looks a bit. Mm. They could, could they have blacked out that circle? Mm. Yeah, very well put together. Not like the Fords of old, um, in terms of the shut lines. Uh, in terms of other aspects, probably not built as well. But the shut lines on modern Fords are excellent, and they all line up, and there is no issues with gaps. And there's another one here. And again, we've got another Fiesta hybrid here. So it's the titanium version, which you, you get a few more toys here and there. Interesting. The 125 brake horsepower 
one litre EcoBoost as usual. By this stage, the EcoBoost has been sorted. Um, the earlier cars had a rubber belt, a rubber timing belt. In this one, it's a chain, but the belt that controls the oil pump from the crankshaft is a wet belt. It's doused in oil. Brilliant design, Ford. Who thought that was going to work? Ooh, nice one. So we have a titanium again, but this is the 100 brake horsepower version. So slightly down tuned this version. So a little bit more kind of down to earth. Quite nice. And then over here again, another one. Yep, 125 brake horsepower, 16 inch wheels. I, I quite like the design of them actually. I think they're quite, they're suited to the lower spec models. Again, now we've got a, a focus here. Now, this focus is again, it's an ST line five door. Now you get 155 brake horsepower on this one and you get all sorts of packs. Oh, Moon does silver was an optional feature. Moon does silver. I thought I recognized the color. Wow, they so they kept Moon to Silver going for quite a while. I uh, don't know why they ditched Pamper Black for. I thought Pamper Black was a lovely colour, but Moon Dust Silver seems to have um, kept itself in the line and it, it really does suit itself rather well, actually, looking at the front of this. The one next to it is, um, I'm pretty sure this is chrome blue. Let's have a look. I, I promise I haven't had a look before. Yes, I'm right. It's chrome blue. Yes, it's a brilliant colour, this. It's, it's just, it's a weird colour. In respect, it's not a deep blue, but it's got that shine to it that it only really comes out in certain times. This is actually a colour not suited to being in the sunlight. I prefer it in the shade, and uh, this is kind of the best place for this paintwork uh, to give it that shine. Yeah, that's nice. Lovely. Oh, we've got uh, the alloys have got a dark sparkle with high gloss finish. I know what you mean. It's, uh, I think um, my Rover 45 alloys have been done in a high sparkle, but it really suits well. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think uh, anything of it, really. It's very subtle, and um, definitely. I think this one has got a high gloss finish as well, but, oh, yes, high sparkle as well. And uh, this one is Agati. Am I pronouncing that right? Agati Black, or Agati Black. I don't know what. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Um, Agati? Sounds quite nice. Mm. Why did they get rid of Panther Black? Now, this is the, much, the Mustang Match E. So it's an EV concept. On, um, mm, interesting. I don't know too much about this car, but I'll show you around. So, um, yep, we've got um, the usual front end. Very nice wheels. I'm doing a bit, I, I think I should get a commission for some of these sales. Um, yeah, it's quite spartan in here. There's not many buttons. That's the idea of modern cars, less the buttons. Got some fabric on the dashboard. This, this part is actually completely fabric. Um, the steering wheel, I don't like the steering wheel. I think it's a bit more understated than the, the Mustang we saw earlier. I, I don't like that. Maybe this is a lower spec, but uh, the felt is really nice actually, using actual felt materials instead of plastics. Um, I think that goes quite well. And we've got this, this curve that goes all the way back. And I can see why they've done the two-tone effect with the color because it kind of links up quite nicely. Ooh, I, these Mustang rear lights in this formulation actually goes quite nice. It, it goes quite nice. I love that. Look at that curve there. Yeah, I like that. Imagine driving down the road and actually you see that curve. Um, that, that's quite nice. Although I'll say the driving position, even though you're high up, the driving position is still quite low compared with the bonnet line. So you're kind of down there. So you, you may not see these lines. Um, before I actually go into the dealership itself, um, we have got some amazing cars in there. This is the turnout. And um, as I say, we've got uh, the best of the bunch, potentially, over here. Now, in here we have, oh dear. Okay, I think this is a replica, but if it's a good replica, it's spot on. And there have been numerous of these cars made over the years, the WRC replica as, yeah. It is a complete replica, because you wouldn't have had them. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it's 
been kept quite nice this it's been tastefully replicated by a very loving owner uh, and it's been put on this display on the inside here wow okay this is just cracking isn't it i absolutely love this i mean who, who who's into mark ones and doesn't love this i think if you don't like this you're not a mark one person quite frankly and um yeah i'm never going to drive one i'm never going to own one but um why, why don't you build one it's quite handy that you can vent your gases out from the coolant bottle yeah all these names brilliant names and by the side of it we have a fantastic escort oh yes 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 an escort mark 5 and it is the usual it is an rs 2000 thought somebody told me that this was in here and um these are pretty rare these are pretty rare cars these rs 2000s absolutely gorgeous look at that uh, so someone absolutely loves this car this is the original oh my god it's the original sales invoice 13,149 and that is pretty big money for August 92 <laughs> you on some good money if you could afford one of these back in the day and it is the earlier version where they obviously they don't have the oval um, grill at the front this was a very early mark 5 and uh, yeah you only got this stuff uh, mainly on the RS models lovely Recaro front seats and oh yes I do apologize for the reflections because this is one very looked after car and over here we have another a Mark II RS and this is obviously the face lifted Mark II RS oh yes with the indicators fully in the mirrors the the proper full-sized indicator not a little plinth as you got on the pre facelift models with the standard alloys this is actually really really standard i don't know if you can actually see in there the reflections are quite high from the windows uh but um the idea is that you probably don't see it it's just black 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 yeah i love that i love that ah you can see a little bit better in there now just it looks as i've said before the mark ii rs looks exceptionally familiar on the inside to any mark ii owner there's nothing massively different about them apart from the possible start stop button by the gear lever that's something carried over from the mark one rs and we have the current mark IV. Oh yes 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 and it is the st version just checking just checking before i get it wrong and i get uh, swammed oh you got it wrong again i love this square bottom steering wheel in fact if i come round here because for some reason the reflections are really pushing in i do think on a mark 4 the interior was actually an improvement on the mark 3 aesthetically but the build quality particularly with the center console from what i've been told is a bit 50 50. i have to show you this wow a 1923 Ford Model T. Um, these cars were manufactured for about 20 years and quite a significant model, probably the most significant car model ever. It sold in millions and it could run on petrol, kerosene, paraffin, you name it. This is the coupe version, by the way. I I'm pretty sure I've got that right. Yes, I have looked at the information in front of me, but um, I kind of knew that anyway. But I don't know too much else. So, let's come to the front and have a look at, well, I presume BB is the name of this beautiful car. And she is one heck of a beauty, actually. With its wooden wheels. Oh, yes. Everything exposed, a big leaf spring at the front. That's your suspension at the front. Obviously, back in the day, the front suspension was not independent. It was linked by a bar. Um, but anyway, let's have a look. So BB is a 1923 Model T Coupe from Arroyo, USA. 
Uh, yep, uh, Ford produces 15 million Model Ts in total between, well, for 19 years, between 1908 and 1927. Um, it is the first car to be mass produced. We all know that. If you're not into cars, uh, if you, you're into cars, sorry, and you don't know that, you need to do some more research. Even I know that. Um, and produce, my history is pretty rough when it comes to pre war stuff. Um, but um, let's look at some of the stats down there. I was actually right. Petrol, kerosene, paraffin, and moon, moonshine as a fuel could run on anything basically. Uh, the period extras was an electric start, I bet that was expensive. Uh, accessory rear brakes, because obviously you didn't need uh, rear brakes in the day, it was just the front ones. Um, a foot throttle, I was opposed to a hand one. Uh, the gearbox is a three planetary triple gears, two speed, high and low and reverse. I have no idea what that means. I can uh, have some basic idea. The maximum speed, 42 miles an hour. I wouldn't even want to go up 30 in this. Uh, trying to brake at 42 miles an hour, you probably need the size of the M1 to stop braking at that, dis at that sort of speed. Um, so it's got 18-line uh, side valves, obviously side valve engine, 2.8 litre, four-cylinder, 20 horsepower, and the cost, brand new, was $364. That is almost £7,000 in today's money. Woo. Okay, that's a lot. It doesn't have an oil, water, or fuel pump, or temperature gauge. Uh, it's unbelievable. So... The pedals. Now, we, I have to talk about the pedals. There's three pedals on the floor and they don't do what you think they do. So the left hand pedal is high and low gear, the middle pedal is reverse and the right pedal is the brake. And the throttle and the timing is set by using levers on the column. That's right, because you've got to sort of advance and retard the ignition. It's not done for you, so you, you kind of got your advance and retard levers. Uh, and as I say, those pedals are in that configuration. It, it's just mind-boggling how it works. Um, I, I really don't begin to understand, but how car technology is, it's a different world. Well, you know, last century was a different world. I think 30 years ago feels like a different world, and this certainly shows it. Oh, uh, usual, she's uh, dripping everywhere. She's, uh, she's lost control of herself as usual, but that's actually nothing for a car this age. That's pretty good. We have a Mark II RS right in front of us in ultimate green and unfortunately, well, for someone, oh dear, it's for sale. Oh dearie dearie me. This is one heck of a good example and it has been to a few places. One thing I like, clear LEDs. I think these are a really good touch uh, for any Mark II Focus. And the same one here. I love it, clear LEDs. And they are pure LEDs, they're not bulbs. Yeah, it's stunning in white. Purely stunning. You tell me what that is for. Put it in the comments. And I think for this episode, that is where we leave this with these wonderful cars. I mean, this over here, Oof. absolutely amazing. I'm going to leave this here because I've got a couple of people to chat to, but this was actually a decent meet, a really good show, and it's been put on by the brilliant people of Evans Halshaw, and it's just fabulous to see all these beautiful motors here, and people enjoying Fords and loving Fords. And yes, I've shown that I have an interest beyond uh, the older stuff. And yes, some of the modern cars I don't prefer. I don't think some of these that we've seen today are a patch on the old stuff. But nevertheless, you have to appreciate technology changes and things have changed for the better, some for the worst, but it's the way it is. Anyway, you take care guys. I will see you very soon.